John chapter 8 tonight and verse number 30, and we're going to read down to verse 36. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? And Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you tonight for the word of God and for the privilege of gathering round about it before we begin this new week. May something said tonight ignite a holy passion in the hearts of each of us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. In the last few months, we have seen and heard the stories of young men who have gone into schools and done dastardly deeds with guns and in other ways. Every night, we see on the news the stories of people who bring harm even to their own family members. We hear of people that are captive to drink and alcohol immorality, and other forms of vice. And all of this reminds us of the fact that you can live in the freest land of all and still not be free. You can have freedom all around you, but if in your heart you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, then you do not know the meaning of true freedom. Jesus is in the temple teaching and confronting the Pharisees. And we see that all of the story behind John chapter 8 began when the Pharisees had thrown a woman caught in a very act of adultery right in front of Jesus. And they were testing him to see whether or not uh, he would condemn her. Jesus bent over and into the sand. He began to write, and many scholars believe that he wrote that day the Ten Commandments. And he looked at those Sadducees and Pharisees and he said, He that is without sin amongst you... Let him cast the very first stone. Jesus was illustrating that even with all of their religiosity and legalistic pride, that they themselves still fell short of the glory of God. That they themselves were not perfect, but still needed the freedom that could only come from Jesus Christ. Jesus was teaching the audience about freedom and As religious as the Pharisees were, he was showing them that they were still in bondage. And I have seen in my experience people who, even in their religion, are bound by religion and not understanding the freedom that comes from Jesus Christ. They're still trying somehow to, through performance, somehow please others and please a God that already loves them and cares for them and cares for their soul. And while in one sense there is the truth of progressive sanctification and we certainly do not want to quench the Holy Spirit of God, in the other sense of the word, God would never love you any more than he loves you right now tonight. And so we see that Jesus was teaching them about what it really would mean to be free indeed. John 8, 36, the Bible says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. And everyone tonight needs this gift of freedom. Everyone can receive it only through the Lord Jesus Christ. I was very proud of Matt McDaniel, and as he was overseas, he would write me sometimes some letters and And he'd say, Pastor, I'm trying to witness to my buddies here and trying to share the gospel with them and and, and, and pray that I'll have open doors to give the gospel. And listen, it's a wonderful thing to serve in the military. It's a wonderful thing to fight for freedom. But if you don't know Jesus Christ, you can be in the military fighting for freedom that you really don't have yourself. Jesus is clear that freedom comes through knowing him. I want you to see how freedom can be found in every life and just a few quick thoughts tonight from the Word of God. First of all, I want you to notice from our text that there is freedom in the truth of Jesus Christ. There is freedom in the truth of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in verse 31, 
If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now positionally we are set apart in Christ. We have freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet there is, as I said a moment ago, a process of personal sanctification. The sanctification of the Christian life happens in two ways. It happens through the Word of God and it happens by the Spirit of God. Let me repeat this again. When someone is saved, they are placed in Christ. They positionally, Ephesians 1, 6, are accepted in the Beloved. You'll never be more loved and more accepted when you are in Christ. You are completely accepted in the Beloved. How many of you thank God for that? But then we read a verse like this tonight. If you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And there are some who would say in such an extreme interpretation of the grace of God that we do not need to follow the commands of God. And yet I would say tonight that as we're growing in the grace of God, indeed we will follow the commands of God. For the grace of God does not take away the commandment of God. And God's commandment in this passage is simply stated, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. In other words, it's more than just a bumper sticker Christianity to say, I am a Christian. Jesus said, if you are my disciple, you'll follow my word, and you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. So there's freedom in the truth. And to know that freedom, it's important that we are first of all saved and found in Christ, but it's also important that we continue in the word. Now let me ask you a question tonight. How many of you have ever known someone that was saved, and they had complete forgiveness, they had been set free from the bondage of sin, But as a Christian, they were not living according to the freedom that was afforded to them. And as a Christian, they were in bondage, even as a Christian. How many of you have met somebody like that? I've met Christians who are bitter. I've met Christians who are unforgiving. And what does that tell us? They're not continuing in the Word of God. The Bible is not only what we read, but the Bible is what we read with. And God wants us through the Word of God to know the freedom that comes as a disciple. John 8, 31, he says, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. 2 Timothy 3, 14, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And so there is an important principle for those of us who would not only know the freedom of Christ, but who would experience it day by day. And the principle found here is that we would continue in the Word of God. In short, if we neglect and disobey the Word of God, though we've been set free from the bondage of sin, we will not continue and know a discipleship relationship with Jesus Christ. One of the, one of the lessons in our continued discipleship is a lesson on how to have personal devotions. Why? Because we want folks to know the importance of continuing in the Word as a disciple of Jesus Christ. So we're to continue in the Word. And then secondly, we're to continue in His truth. Look at that in verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, thank the Lord tonight that God has given to us His truth. And as we learn his truth, there is freedom to be found there. John 8, 32 emphasizes this. It is the truth that shall set us free. And what is the truth that we're learning about tonight? It is the very word of God. John 17, 17, the Bible says, as Jesus prayed his intercessory prayer, he said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Now, were they not already set apart when they followed the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes, they had positional sanctification. They belonged to Jesus Christ. But, he said, would you sanctify them through thy truth? In other words, a progressive sanctification. We are set apart in Christ, but we are constantly being set apart by the Word of God. It is something that we understand to be uh, a sanctification in the sense of our progressive sanctification. And so there's freedom in the truth. I'm saying to you tonight, you can be saved, but live in bondage if you don't continue in the truth. 
If you deny the teaching of the Word of God, you may be saved, but you'll not know the freedom that God intended for you if indeed you neglect the very Word of God. And so always remember tonight, there is freedom in the truth. There's freedom to be found in the Word of God. Secondly, I want you to notice in this passage that there's freedom in obedience. Now we see this often uh, misunderstood in America today. People say, well, I have freedom so I can do whatever I want. I can, I can burn the flag. I can steal a car. I can throw a chair through the window at Starbucks. This is my country. I can do whatever I want. How many of you know enough of that happens and they're not going to be free. They're going to be behind bars. Why? Because freedom is not the right to disobey the law. Turn in your Bible, if you would, for just a moment uh, over to the book of Romans. And I want you just to be reminded, many of you have seen this before, but notice in Romans for a moment, chapter number 6. Romans chapter 6 and verse number 1. All right? Let's read this together, shall we? Ready, begin. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So our position is that we are dead to sin, but we are to live in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are to live according to the Word of God. There's freedom in following the Word of God. Now notice back in our text, John 8, 33. They answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? And Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. All right? Now let's take a look at this. Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And I say to you again, you can be saved and live a life of sin, and you're not free when you're living that life of sin. You are in bondage, even as a believer. You say, well, I belong to Jesus, and he loves me. And yes, he does. But you're not experiencing freedom when you're disobeying the truth of the Word of God. And so notice, if you would, in this passage, first of all, the bondage of sin. Sin only brings bondage. And he says in verse 34, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. 2 Peter 2, 19 speaks of this. While they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. The Jews talked about political freedom. They wanted Jesus to bring in a kingdom. His disciples did. But Jesus went right to the main problem, which was not political. It was a problem of the heart. It was their need to trust in the Lord Jesus and to follow the word of the Lord Jesus. So we see the bondage that that sin brings, but notice secondly, the blessing that obedience brings. Now come back and notice this, what Jesus says to them. He says very clearly uh, in verse number 33, he says, they answered, we be Abraham's seed and we're never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? And Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And so freedom comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians 5 and 13 tells us this. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. Whenever someone speaks about their liberty and their freedom as a license to live in the flesh, they don't understand what liberty and freedom are all about. Because liberty and freedom is our privilege to follow the Word of God and to follow after His will for our life. So in this text we see, first of all, there is freedom in the truth. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Secondly, there is freedom in obedience. You show me a Christian that's living obedient to the Holy Spirit and obediently to the Word of God, and they're living out the freedom that was intended for them. You show me a Christian that's denying the Word of God and living in anger and living in sin, and they're not enjoying the freedom that God intended them to enjoy. Then I want you to notice tonight, not only is there freedom in the truth and freedom in obedience, but notice thirdly, there is freedom in Jesus Christ personally. And come down, if you would, now to verse 35. What does it say? 
And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. And if the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Now the ultimate way to freedom, of course, is knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. And I want you to see a few things about this relationship before we close tonight. Notice, first of all, it is a permanent relationship. It is a permanent relationship. Verse 35, the Son abideth forever. Jesus is explaining the difference between spiritual freedom and spiritual bondage is a matter of whether one is a son or whether one is a servant. The servant may live in the house, but he's not a part of the family. He cannot be guaranteed a future. There may be a servant that's around and he's a part of the house, but if you are a son, then you are guaranteed a part of the future. And that's what Jesus Christ is telling us in this passage. And that's something that we must never forget. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. It's a permanent relationship. And notice the power of this relationship in verse 36. You shall be free. Notice this word indeed. It means certainly. It means for a fact. When we are saved, we are free indeed. Nothing can take it away from us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. 2 Corinthians 3.17. Now the Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So the basis of freedom and acceptance becomes our platform for life. We no longer serve because we have to. We serve because we have been set free. We no, we no longer serve because uh, we, we are expected to. We serve because we have been set free. And this is the basis of Christianity. I don't sing. I don't witness. I don't give uh, because I'm expected to. I do this because I am free to do it for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we serve Him out of a heart of love for Him. I wonder tonight, are you living in the freedom of the Christian life? I want you to know something tonight. There's freedom in Jesus Christ. I want you to know there's freedom in obedience. If you're living a disobedient life, you're not having freedom tonight. And I want you to know there's freedom in the Word of God. So many times people think, if I cast off restraint and have it my way, that's real freedom. Yep, that's freedom. I'm going to go mark up my body. I'm going to go on a drunken binge. I'm just going to go prove that I'm free. How many of you have seen that's not freedom at all? Freedom is knowing Christ and serving Him from a heart of love, walking in His truth and walking in obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ. I once heard an American ambassador say these words. The embassy is a little spot of America set down in an alien land. On the walls, we have pictures of Washington and Lincoln with a big flag, old glory, held high over everything. Inside the embassy, the laws of our own country are supreme. We celebrate Christmas, Thanksgiving, and the 4th of July. Let me repeat, the embassy is a little spot of America in an alien land. May I say tonight that whatever is going on around us in our culture, that we ourselves should enjoy the freedom of Jesus Christ, that we ourselves are ambassadors for Jesus Christ, and that we can always, no matter what's happening in the culture, be free because we are free indeed. May I say it to you this way? Our Christian friends in China where churches have been bulldozed in recent months, they are free indeed in Jesus Christ. And there are people in the United States of America with all of our freedom who are less free tonight than people in China because they do not know the freedom that Jesus Christ can bring. Thank God tonight for our American freedom. Thank God for those who serve to keep us free and safe. But thank God first and foremost for His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that came to set you free indeed. And once He set you free, don't serve out of a spirit of bondage, 
but serve out of a spirit of loving obedience, saying, Lord, because of what you've done for me, I want to lavish worship on you and serve you and thank you for all that you've done.